OC Financial Media presents in association with CHL Mortgage. As heard on KTLK AM 1150. From LA to Orange County. Your host, Dino Katsiamentis. It's about your real estate. It's about your money. From your estate to real estate, it's Money Matters with Dino. Welcome back to Money Matters with Dino on Cape Talk, AM 1150. If you have any questions at all for myself or for my guests, you can give us a call at 949 720 1616. That's 949 720 1616. Today we have a great show for you. And uh, I want to I want to say thank you to Reverse Mortgage Educators for helping sponsor this show today. Reverse Mortgage Educators has been on the show a few times now. And I got to tell you, I didn't know anything about reverse mortgages until they came on. Even though I'm the mortgage guy, I never got involved with them. I just I, I, I didn't think highly of them. But now I'm, I'm educated. I feel um, that it is an appropriate loan for the right person. If you're a, a 62 years of age or older and are having problems paying your bill, don't put this off. Give them a call and find out what your options are. Call us at 949-720-1616. That's 949-720-1616. And I'll put you in touch with them directly. <laughs> All right, we are talking about bankruptcy today. Bankruptcy looming. What? Here are your options. So we have our uh, our experts, Rob Go from uh, Go and Forsyth Law Firm in Irvine. Rob, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me here today, Dino. Tell us a little bit about you know what you do, how long you've been in the business, and what got you involved in in bankruptcy law. Well, after graduating from from law school, um, I obtained a clerkship with a bankruptcy judge, David Noggle, who was out in San Bernardino, now out in Riverside, and um, worked there for a year and um, got to know the, my way around the bankruptcy code. And since then, I've basically, for the last uh, 25 years, I've had my own bankruptcy firms representing uh, businesses, individuals, bankruptcy trustees, and creditors in basically all aspects of um, bankruptcy proceedings. Well, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Mrs. Valerie Torelli, yes. welcome back to the show. It's good to be here, both of you. It's nice to see you, Phil. Dino. You are one of my favorite people because you have a story for pretty much everything. <laughs> and if I don't, I'll make one up. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but, but at least it's an entertaining story every time. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I'm looking forward to having you both on the show here today. And um, if you guys don't mind, let's just get right into the questions. I'd love to. All right. So... Rob, let's let's start with you. What are the most likely causes for bankruptcy in the United States? Well, typically when you're dealing with bankruptcy cases, you're either dealing with an individual or um, a company of some sorts, a corporation, LLC, et cetera. Um, usually the driving force behind individuals' bankruptcies are foreclosure sales. Um, and it, as we know, in California, there's basically the 120-day foreclosure sale process. And um, when a, a foreclosure sale is looming on a piece of property, be it a commercial property or their, their home, um, they'll want to file a, a bankruptcy of some sort to, to stay the foreclosure sale because the bankruptcy proceeding um, automatically stops without any further action um, subject to some exceptions, if there's been multiple bankruptcy filings and the like, it, it will stop the bankruptcy. It will stop the foreclosure sale. Um, the other scenario, not as as prevalent, but also you'll see regularly, is if there's litigation pending against an individual or a corporation, and um, say a trial is coming up, and oftentimes um, to avoid an adverse judgment, uh, you'll see a bankruptcy filing. So it's pretty much foreclosures or litigation. Um, and then sometimes with just straight consumers, they may just have overwhelming amounts of credit card debt, medical bills, and things like that, where it comes to a point where they simply cannot continue to make the payments, and they, and they make a determination to file a bankruptcy to try to deal with that debt. Okay. Now, I know there's several different kinds of bankruptcy, but before we get into all of them, let's, let's start with Chapter 7. What, what is Chapter 7 bankruptcy? Well, the Chapter 7 is obviously the most common form of a bankruptcy proceeding. It's, it's, a, it's a Chapter 7 um, is a liquidation proceeding where a debtor um, has to put in all of its non-exempt assets 
um, and a bankruptcy trustee is appointed who then liquidates those assets to the extent there's anything available. In exchange for contributing all of their assets into the uh, Chapter 7 case, um, a debtor is seeking a discharge of the debt. Um, basically, that means the debtor does not want to, uh, no longer wants to be on the hook for any of his credit cards, medical bills, and things like that. Um, in a Chapter 7 context, although the liens on properties, those don't go away. The liens on real estate uh, under certain um, different circumstances we'll talk about later, for the most part, um, they're not discharged. So a, a typical Chapter 7 bankruptcy is what's called a no-asset bankruptcy case. That doesn't mean the debtor doesn't have any assets, like a house or something, but he doesn't have typically any equity in the house over and above um, the exemptions that are available under California law. Now, isn't there also some sort of other law that says that you have you can't make more than a certain amount in order for a Chapter 7 to go through? Correct. Um, in 2005, um, what was passed was this, basically they call it BAP CPA, which is this bankruptcy abuse um, uh, re revisions to the bankruptcy code, which were hard pressed by the credit card companies um, in order to make it more difficult for individuals to discharge their debt in a Chapter 7 case and try to force them into either a Chapter 13 or a Chapter 11 proceeding. Um, what happens is, is that as part of the, um, the bankruptcy filing, um, you have to do a credit counseling a report with a company, and then you have to fill out what's called a means test. And if your income is above the household median, say in um, Orange County, which is probably like around $65,000, which most people are, you have to fill out this means test. And if it's determined that your income um, that's available after you pay all of your bills and other allowable expenses, um, it, you may not be able to qualify to file Chapter 7. So that comes into play when you have really high earners, um, you know, a doctor or, or someone else who's, you know, making multiple six figures, sometimes it is more difficult for them to go into a Chapter 7 and to try to discharge all their debt. Let me ask you this. What, I think you said 65000 right? It's kind of I don't know that typical. exact number, but it's right around there. It's whatever the household median income is, and it varies from particular jurisdictions based on, so it would be lower in other states and it would be higher in the highest in California. I know it's a stupid question, and Phil's going to look at me funny, but let, let's say you were making 100000 a year, so you're definitely above that, but you had 10 kids and uh, some medical, you know, something, I mean, means test. Does that take into, a, into effect? Yeah, well, ba well basically, what, what typically will allow a high earner to still qualify for a Chapter 7 will be that you're allowed to deduct regular installment payments they have. So if they've got a big house mortgage payment or if they've got car payments and things like that, um, those can be deducted from their from the, the available income. So you can usually drive the number down so they don't have any available income. But the hard person would be the guy, and I've had a couple of circumstances like this, that's making, you know, three, four hundred thousand dollars a year, but is like renting an apartment for $3,000 a month. Right. That kind of person is going to have a lot of disposable income, and it's going to be very difficult to put them through a, a Chapter 7 proceeding. So in a bankruptcy situation, if you owned property, you're almost a little better off, right? And Yeah, and in terms of you, you can, de you can deduct, even if the mortgage payment is super high, and you have like car payments, Mercedes and things like that, um, where you have really large lease payments or other contractual payments, those really can't be challenged from the standpoint of saying that, well, you should have to get rid of the car or something like that. You can deduct that off. Really? Of, yes. There are some good faith elements to it, but just on the straight means test, yes, you can include all of those installment payments. You don't include credit card payments and things like that. It's just where you've got payments that are on that are basically secured debt on cars, homes, and the like. So they can't turn around and say, listen, you only make 80 grand a year. You have no business having a Bentley. Yeah, I mean, you, there's, you can try to, ch there can be challenges on good faith, um, separate and apart from the means test, but it, it doesn't happen that often because the primary party responsible for making a determination whether or not it's an abuse to be in a Chapter 7 is the office of the United States trustee. Creditors normally can't make those arguments. So 
the you know the U.S. trustee's office has limited resources, and right now, in fact, they're basically shut down with the, the government shutdown. <laughs> so they don't have a lot of time to look over thousands upon thousands of um, bankruptcy petitions for abuse. All right, let's move on. Chapter 9 is for municipalities. Chapter 12 is for farmers, which out here in, in SoCal, I guess we don't have too many of those. So let's just kind of skip right over to Chapter 13. What, what's Chapter 13 and why would somebody choose that? Okay, a, ch a Chapter 13 is a reorganization. Unlike a Chapter 7 where you have a bankruptcy trustee who's immediately appointed for the purposes of basically garnering all your assets for the purposes of um, liquidating them for creditors, and, and, and I, let me temper that for a moment. It's highly unlikely that a Chapter 7 trustee would come into someone's house and try to take their furniture or, you know, clothing or other personal property. It would, they would have to be extremely valuable assets like expensive artwork or jewelry or things like that because typically most of your average and ordinary household possessions are, are exempt and so the trustee wouldn't take them. Um, a Chapter 13 is a reorganization uh, for a consumer who has regular income. Um, what makes a Chapter 13 often sometimes challenging in, um, in Orange County in particular is there's debt limitations and you can only have secured debt of around a million one and unsecured debt of about 370000 or so. So if you're debt exceeds, if you have a, like a home with a mortgage on it that's more than $1.1 million approximately, you can't file a Chapter 13, and it forces you to file a Chapter 11. People typically file Chapter 13 bankruptcies when they want to retain their assets, and oftentimes it occurs when they're behind on their home mortgages, and they want to try to make up the home mortgage payments over time and keep the house. Unlike a Chapter 7, you can't make up the payments over time. You're at the mercy of the lender. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. So let's, um, let's talk about real estate for a minute. Um, first, can you explain the California exemption law and, and most importantly, the homestead exemption? Okay. Under California law, what, what basically happens is, is in a bankruptcy proceeding, um, you look to California law to determine exemptions. Um, California has opted out of the federal exemption. So the California exemptions, which are in the California Code of Civil Procedure uh, 703 and 704, dictate what exemptions a debtor is entitled to in a bankruptcy proceeding, be it a Chapter 7, 11, or a 13. The most important exemption is the homestead exemption. The homestead exemption is in um, CCP 704.730, and it basically provides that if you're single... Um, you get $75,000 of equity. If you're married, you get $100,000 of equity. And if you're over 65 or you're disabled, you get $175,000 of equity. You don't have to file any sort of document like a homestead declaration in order to get it in a bankruptcy case. You get it automatically. Just as a caveat, and this is sometimes where there's some confusion, if your house is underwater, let's say you owe a million and it's worth a million, you still you don't get your homestead exemption, your $100,000. The lender can foreclose on you, and they don't have any obligation to give you your homestead exemption. The homestead exemption comes into play to basically protect equity that's in the property. So if your house is worth one one and you owe a million, that $100,000 can be protected so that a bankruptcy trustee won't go and try to sell your house to try to get that hundred thousand dollars of equity. Got it. Okay. Well, if you just jumped into your car, you're listening to Money Matters with Dino on K Talk AM eleven fifty. Today we're talking about bankruptcy looming. Here are your options. And we have Rob Go from Go Forsyth and Valerie Torelli from Torelli Realty in Costa Mesa. Um, this is a, a dynamic show and it's got a lot of rich content that you're gonna want to listen to. Make sure you hang in there over, over the commercials. But if you want to get in touch with these guys directly, call me at 949-720-1616. That's 949-720-1616. Or check us out online at moneymatterswithdino.com. This segment was brought to you by Reverse Mortgage Educators, the reverse mortgage specialist. If you're 62 years or older and are having problems paying your bills, get in touch with them. Reverse Mortgage Educators. We'll be right back. 50 years ago, you didn't have any worries. You danced the night away. But the music 
slowed down. And now you have financial worries and woes you never thought you would be faced with in retirement. I'm so afraid that my husband and I aren't going to be able to afford to live in our home. Thousands of people have chosen to put a spring in their financial step by taking advantage of a government-insured reverse mortgage loan that turns the equity in your home into tax-free cash. You can use the cash for whatever you want. Pay off medical bills, credit cards, travel, and start to enjoy your retirement. Best of all, you still own your own home. Call now. Find out how you can qualify for a life without monthly mortgage payments. Call now and we will send you a free DVD that will explain if a reverse mortgage is right for you. Call the number on your screen right now. No obligation, just education. Mortgage professionals, are you looking for a company that values you as a loan officer? One that can provide you with the tools you need to grow your business at your pace? Then look no further than CHL Mortgage. CHL Mortgage provides you with a full range of residential loan products and services. You'll be backed by an exceptionally trained team of professionals that can take your clients as seriously as you do. Your clients will be treated with dedicated service, personal integrity, and exceptional professionalism. You'll be able to guide them in the right loan with competitive rates and keep them on the road to achieving life's goals. To get started on advancing your career, call Dino with CHL Mortgage at 949-720-1616. That's CHL Mortgage, 949-720-1616. Welcome back to Money Matters with Dino. If you have any questions at all about anything you hear here today, give us a call at 949-720-1616. That's 949-720-1616. This segment is brought to you by Citywide Home Loans. And um, I, I always say we got the best rates, we got the best service, we got the best blah, blah, blah. But more importantly, what I want to get across is that um, the majority of these mortgage companies out there, really, you're just a number, and and it's about getting the deal in and out as fast as possible without ever getting to know you, the client. So at Citywide Home Loans, it's not like that. We actually take the time to get to know you, and we do what your needs require, not what our needs require. So if you are in need of a mortgage or just need some real estate advice, remember that. Citywide Home Loans, we can be reached at 949 720 1616. Um, so Money Matters with Dino is also providing a new service now. If you want to know the value of your home, just text the word appraisal and your address to 313131. All you have to do is text the word appraisal and your address to 313131, and we'll have one of our trusted advisors get back to you within 24 hours. All right, so today we're talking about bankruptcy looming. Here are your options. And Valerie, I know you've been uh, brought in to be an expert uh, witness or to give expert testimony in a lot of different cases. Um, And and after talking to you the other day about it, I I think I know why, because you said you made a comment. You said, I've practically been into every single house in in the area, (laughs) which I guess makes you the expert. So tell us about your expert testimony. Like, what are you usually brought in for? Sure. Um Sure. I have to be honest, it has nothing to do with bankruptcies or foreclosures. So I'm, I'm a little bit of a fish out of the water when I, because I've been taking copious notes as Mr. Goh has been talking. I'm really excited about that. Um, most of the times, just to be honest, it's um, the divorce and the death. You know, it, it's, it's amazing um, how that is. There's just so much contention. And what you're dealing with a lot of times is people's emotions. And so you, you have a house that's worth you know, $750,000 and somebody else says, well, it's worth eight hundred. dollars But if you divide that between the two, you're literally fighting over such a small amount. They bring in attorneys, they bring in this, they bring in that. And by the time that they're done, that $25,000 each maybe um, is dissipated. So I'm oftentimes brought in for the valuations. What would a house market for? What would be the closing costs and how do we divide that up? And I'm actually honored and humbled to say that most of the times I'm, I've done that um, without the attorneys. In other words, I just come in and I, I literally ask the husband and the wife if they can sit down together and, and be able to solve that before we ever get to court. I do that all as part of 
just like you, Dina, when you say it's it's about getting to know the people and doing it. So I do it. There's no payday in for me other than it's the right thing to do. But I flat out tell them, if I got to go to court after I've seen all the houses and I'm telling you what I feel it would be worth, after selling some 3,000 homes in your area and seeing 95% of every home that has closed in the last 30 years, it's going to cost you $500 an hour. So, I mean, here we are. Here's the value. Um, this is where we're at. A lot of times it just gets solved right away or in a, a deposition. Yeah. Um, I've also been called in for evaluation if there is um, an issue with the property after the close of escrow. And what I mean by that is um, something might not have been disclosed. So, value, Valerie, I'm asked, what is the value um, if they had known about this ahead of time? If, you know, like as, if there was one case where water was actually, you know, coming through the backyard of the property. They didn't know that it wasn't disclosed properly. And did that have an adverse effect? Yes, and what would normally be the adverse effect? Well, I can clearly say that there are many people that wouldn't buy it almost if you gave it to them. Um, here's another example. Uh, what's the value? Um, I hope I'm not getting off subject here, but what's the value if you back to a busy street or the loss of a value? An appraiser might just take a small amount off, but I know that the public takes a large amount off. They're saying, hey, I don't necessarily want to put up with this noise factor sure. you know, back into a freeway, for example. So that's just kind of an interesting thing. But bankruptcy, I'm going to turn to this guy right here on my right because I am taking notes. It's fascinating. <laughs> Thank you so but, but, much. But, but the point you're making, though, Valerie, are, are really important from the standpoint of determining values because oftentimes – um, the you know the Deutsche Bank and the Chase mm -hmm. they'll hire appraisers who come from you know out of the area, and oftentimes do a great disservice um, to the bank clients in coming in with values that are way off. Um, that oftentimes can be, and I've had cases where it's been to the huge advantage of um, a bankruptcy debtor who's been able to take advantage of a low valuation being placed on a property by someone who you know, may have just done Zillow searches or hasn't really gone out there and inspected the property closely. Yes. So the, that's, the, that's an important, it's an important function that you provide in terms you. of, you know, coming to appropriate value. On the other hand, you know, sometimes when the, 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 the lender doesn't know what the value is or hire someone because they're cheaper, um, it can, you know, benefit debtors. So. Yeah, I, I agree with that. It's, um, it's an art, not a science. Uh, the nuances in a neighborhood are, are incredible. Now, I, I, I don't know what's happening out in 29 Palms, but certainly in our in our area, I, I, I know the nuances of just those streets and those things. And, and they cannot send a they cannot send an appraiser out, but they do from Riverside County uh, with a lender in Minnesota. It I just don't understand. And, and there's <laughs> been tremendous amount of disservice to, to both parties. Uh, again, when the markups were in 2002 and three, when they were sending out appraisers going completely the opposite, uh, putting values on anything. And now, now that just as Rob has mentioned that they've gone the other way and they're too conservative. So going back to the bankruptcy, Rob, I, I realized I we were going through all these numbers, and I actually skipped a number. Chapter eleven. What what's Chapter eleven used for? Well, a, ch a Chapter eleven bankruptcy um, is is in a reorganization as well, and one of the the issues that often comes into play is is that an individual that has the debts that exceed a Chapter thirteen has to file a Chapter 11 bankruptcy case. Um, so you have you know, a million and a half dollar mortgage on your house, or you owe, say, $500,000 in credit cards and medical bills. You end up file, having to file a Chapter 11 if you want to reorganize, which is the exact same chapter um, that Lehman Brothers or you know any other huge company would have to file under. And then you, you have the issue of um, you know the expense associated with a Chapter 11 is, is vastly greater than in a Chapter 13 where it's a little more cookie cutter um, and there's forms that can be used. So a Chapter 11 is a reorganization. Individuals can file, corporations, LLCs, anyone who wants to obtain the benefits of um, the, the, the bankruptcy reorganization process can file that. Earlier in the show, you, you brought up foreclosures, and people a lot of times will file bankruptcy in order to save their home. But does it, does it really save their home, or does it just delay the process? Well, 
the, the, you know, that, that's, that's a loaded question, and, you know, you could go on for hours about that. But let's just take a, just from the, the preliminary bankruptcy filing. You file the bankruptcy, and assuming there hasn't been, you know, multiple bankruptcy filings before, there's some other extraordinary order that a bankruptcy court's entered saying you can't be in bankruptcy, um, it stops a foreclosure sale. You file bankruptcy, you stop the sale. And again, that's usually the, the common reason why people file the bankruptcy. Um, you know, it, it depends upon the type of bankruptcy proceeding you're in, in terms of whether or not you can save the property. Um, you know, for many years, you know, the property values were declining and most properties were underwater and bankruptcy cases were oftentimes uh, more hopeless in the sense that People really had no exit strategy if they didn't have substantial income to service the um, the mortgage payments. Um, there was really, or there was really no exit through a sale. Now you're starting to see with the values going up um, that we're filing bankruptcy cases where people may have been you know behind on either you know commercial mortgages or on homes. Um, and, you know, seriously delinquent, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars, maybe two years behind on their payments that are actually now being saved by the real estate market because the market's, you know, turned sure. around and you can't really typically get like exit type financing. They can't really get loans to take it out because there's not going to be a you know traditional lender to make the loan and there's not going to be enough equity for a hard money lender. But you'd be able to oftentimes sell the properties today. And, you know, we've been successful in um, cases just recently. We sold property, um, you know, Corona del Mar for about five and a half million dollars. And we have a couple other cases where we've been able to sell property. And, you know, it works out well for everyone because, you know, the debtors have been in, parked in the properties for, you know, a couple of years without making payments. And at the same time, they get them sold and get typically most of the creditors paid off. Right. So, in the lending business, um, we have formulas to to see if you qualify for something. In the bankruptcy business, is there such a formula to see if um, if you should avoid bankruptcy? Like you you may, your debt ratio is X amount, you really shouldn't file because you know you have the ability to get out of debt yourself. Or you know, is there any kind of like you look at it and analyze it and say you know yes, I can file for you, but I don't really think you should because according to how much you make and what your debt is, it's not really worth going through all of it. Yeah, I mean, that's a really good question, Dino. Um, you know, sometimes people will come to me and they're making three, four $400,000 a year and they've got 50,000 bucks in credit card debt. It's like, do you really want to file bankruptcy over $50,000? You could probably negotiate it. You could probably pay it. It's not really, you know, going to be to your advantage to go through a whole bankruptcy process to try to, you know, uh, you know, discharge that much debt, even if you assume you could get a discharge, um, you know, you know, and additionally, um, you know, uh, in terms of uh, being able to restructure the debt, um, you know, sometimes people will come in and all they really owe on is their house and the house is upside down and they don't really have any other debt. And it's like, well, I don't want the property to get foreclosed on. And it's like, do you really want to file bankruptcy just, you know, to delay the foreclosure? It's eventually going to get foreclosed on. Now you're going to go through a Chapter 7. And, you know, that might not be the best scenario either. And then the one thing you always have to keep in mind, too, is, is this. If you have assets which you can't exempt, a trustee is going to sell them. So, you know, typically if someone comes in and they've got a bunch of cash, you know, stocks, bonds, money, and, you know, just bank accounts, um, there's really no way to protect that. And the trustee is just going to take it. For, I'll give you an example. I'm at a Chapter 7 case. A guy filed bankruptcy, got terrible legal advice. He had a note that was being paid to him from the sale of a business. And his attorney said, well, you need that money to live on. And, you know, I represent the trustee. And it's like, no, you owe money on that promissory note. And we took it. And we start collecting the money. Um, because one of the requirements under the bankruptcy code to confirm a Chapter 11 plan or a Chapter 13 is, is that creditors have to do as least, as least as well as they would do in a liquidation. So it's not as if you can go into a bankruptcy and have 100000 or a $1 million of debt you could, that, of, of assets that could be obtained in a liquidation and tell the creditors, we're going to give them five cents on the dollar. The creditors will object and say, no, we will get more if you are liquidated. Um, so, you know, there, there are, you have to be very careful filing bankruptcies and, and, and in representing trustees, I see it oftentimes where 
people get bad advice from attorneys who don't know what they're doing and they end up in chapter seven bankruptcies and then are not happy about it later. Can I ask a question? Absolutely. Are you, I'm just taking such great notes here. So what, because I want to be in a position where I can advise people, I mean, we're not supposed to advise, but give people ideas or options. So when I say to them to, to go check with a bankruptcy attorney or to go check with you know, their banks, and you're saying that you know, now that the market's gone up a little bit, is it possible that we filed a, ba- uh, a, a bankruptcy and now the equity is there? Can they or have you seen them be able to go back to the banks and renegotiate a, a different payment, uh, like a, a payment uh, rescheduling? Have you seen that person? Once they filed bankruptcy? Yes, and you've stopped the foreclosure, but now they have some equity. They still can't afford the house. Is it possible they can go back and get a loan mod? Have you seen that happen? Yeah, I mean, every lender is different. If you've got like a private money type lender, they're going to be much less likely to work with you. Um, if they're a you know, large lender, like Indino can comment on this more, you know, like a Bank of America or someone who's who's under a mandate to work with people, yes, you, you will see them more often where they will agree to restructure debt if they can see that, you know, the people are earning income and are, and are able to make payments. And but that, but that goes into a good question that you make is if somebody's got equity, you have to be very careful, especially in Chapter 7 bankruptcy cases, because bankruptcy trustees in Chapter 7s only get paid if they can liquidate assets and sell them. Otherwise, they get a measly like $65 per case. So bankruptcy trustees have a incentive to sit on cases and once you file it and then wait to see if the market rises and then if it gets above the level of your homestead exemption, there's equity, they're going to, they'll sell it out from under you. So when people come into me and they say, well, I go, how much is the property worth? What could somebody really sell this for? And if it's over and above the debt, the secure debt, plus the homestead exemption and plus cost of sale, I go, you'll be real careful here because the bankruptcy trustee is going to try to sell your house. Good advice. Interesting. That's great advice. Thank you. You're listening to Money Matters with Dino on KTalk, Amy 1150. If you have any questions at all about anything you've heard, heard here today, whether it's a mortgage, real estate needs, or in this case, bankruptcy needs, we're giving out free advice. Give us a call. And you don't get attorneys giving out free advice very often, I'm telling you. Give us a call at 949-720-1616. That's 949-720-1616. That's why we're here. We're, we're here to make sure you're getting the most out of your real estate that you can. Protect your finances. Protect your family and be real estate wealthy. Call us at 949-720-1616 or check us out online at moneymatterswithdino.com. Your state to real estate, we're here to help. Why? Because your wealth is my business. Stick with us, we'll be right back after the break.